Hello everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to create a toolbar. The toolbar is a widget that's displayed beneath the menu bar, and its purpose is to give the user quick access to some of the more useful features of your application. Okay, so we're inside mainwindow.cpp, and we're going to go to the bottom of the constructor, and we're just going to type create toolbar. The create toolbar method returns a pointer to the toolbar. And now we'll need to add a tool to our toolbar. To do that, we'll need to call the add tool method. The first parameter is the ID. In this case, we're going to use WXID new. The second parameter is a label. In this case, we'll just call it new. And the third parameter is a bitmap, which will be displayed in the toolbar. So for this tool, we'll get the bitmap from the WXR provider class. And whenever you add a new tool to your toolbar, you need to call the realize method, because if you don't, the tool won't show up in the toolbar. All right, so let's see what that looks like. So this is our toolbar, and here's our tool, and if we click on this, the on new event handler is called, because when you click on this tool, it emits a menu event, which is exactly what would happen if you clicked on the new menu item. Now let's create a tool for the test menu item. This should really be test item, not file item. Let me fix that real quick. Now we'll just add the label. The bitmap is going to be a bit of a problem. The WXR provider class obviously doesn't have a bitmap for our custom menu item, so we're going to have to create one. I'm going to use GIMP real quick to create an icon.
So we'll just go to File, New. And I'm going to create a 16 by 16 pixel image. And we'll just zoom in so we can see. There we go. I'm just going to add some uh, red splotches to this. Perfect. Now we need to export our image. And we need to give it a name. I'm going to call it test. And I want to export this to my desktop. And I want the file extension to be XPM. Okay, we can get rid of that. And now we should see our test.xpm file on our desktop. Let's open that up. And you can see that inside this file, we just have a C style array. Um, I want to change the name here. Let's get rid of this. So the array is just going to be test underscore XPM. Let's save that. And we'll open up our project folder. And we'll open up the folder where all of our CPP and .h files are. And we'll just drop that in. Okay, now inside mainwindow.cpp, we're going to go to the top. And we're going to include that file. And now we can use that array to create a bitmap. All right, so let's run that. And we get a build error. And the error says, cannot convert from const char 11 to char pointer. So let's go take another look at our XPM file. Over here, inside the Solution Explorer, just click this little icon. And go to Folder View. Now inside of our main project folder, we can go ahead and open our XPM file. So the error says cannot convert from const char 11 to char pointer. So can't convert this to a char pointer. So let's just add const here and see if that helps. Okay, that worked. And we can see our custom bitmap here in the toolbar. And if I click on this, the on test event handler is called.
Now let's create a tool for our on quit event handler. The ID is WXID exit. The label is quit. And we'll get the bitmap from the WXR provider class. And if we click on this, our on quit event handler is called. So far, all we've done is create tools for existing event handlers. So let's try creating a tool that doesn't already have an event handler. I'm going to create a help tool. Now let's run that. And here's our help tool. But if I click on it, nothing happens. That's because the event handler doesn't exist. So we'll need to create one. But before we do that, we need to fix the icon. This icon is too big. It's 32 by 32 pixels. We want a 16 by 16 pixel icon. WX art other is the default value to the second parameter of the get bitmap method. We're not interested in the second parameter, we're interested in the third parameter, which allows us to specify a size. And now the help icon looks more like the others. Okay, now we need to create an event handler for the help tool. Let's go take a look at the documentation for the WX toolbar. All right, so here's our event handler. So let's copy that. And we'll paste that in. And we'll just change the name to on help.
Now, like I already said, when we click on our tool, it emits a menu event just like a WX menu item. So this event macro processes a WX event tool event. Now, like the description says, the tool event and the menu event are the exact same thing. So we can use either the tool event macro or the menu event macro. Either one of these will work. And we'll just change the ID to WXID help. And the function is the event handler we just created. And apparently I can't copy, so I'm just going to type this in. Okay, so now our help tool should be connected to the help event handler. And it is. You can add a separator in between the tools if you like. So let's see what that looks like. It's hard to tell, but there's a really little space here now in between these two icons. You can also add a stretchable space. This is our stretchable space. It just pushes everything over to the right. We can also set some help text on our tools. The help text will show up as a blurb when we hover our mouse over the tool. To do that, we need to call the set tool short help method. The first parameter is the ID. In this case, that's WXID help. And the second parameter is the text. So let's take a look at that. So if I hover my mouse over the tool, the text will be displayed. There's also a set tool long help method. 
The set tool long help method will set some text in the status bar when you hover over the tool. Now when I hover over the tool, the text will be displayed in the status bar. Okay everybody, that's it for the toolbar. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.